So the goal of this video is to express the velocity vector and uh, the kinetic energy using polar coordinates. Let's consider the position of an object. This position is denoted by the vector r. Um, if we choose a Cartesian uh, set of coordinates, we can represent uh, this vector r with its coordinates uh, x and y. Using the unit vector ex and ey along these axes, we can then express the vector r um, as function of these coordinates and these unit vectors. By definition, the velocity uh, vector is the time derivative of the position vector. And then in Cartesian coordinates, its expression simply becomes to get the kinetic energy we need first to square this velocity vector. The square of a unit vector is naturally 1 um, and we also have to take the scalar product of Ex and Ey. Remember that the scalar product is defined um, as follows. But Ex and Ey are orthogonal and because cosine of 90 degrees is 0 uh, the scalar product of two orthogonal vectors is zero. Therefore, we only end up with a um, velocity uh, vector squared equal to x dot squared plus y dot squared, giving the kinetic energy half m uh, times x dot squared plus y dot squared. This is fine, but what we want is um, velocity vector and the kinetic energy expressed in polar coordinates. So in polar coordinates, um, the position vector r is simply expressed as the magnitude of the vector r uh, times the unit vector er. This unit vector is naturally parallel to the vector r and from uh, uh, we can also define the uh, vector e theta, which is perpendicular to this uh, unit vector er. Um, theta being the angle between uh, the vector r and some axis, for instance, x. The difficulty with um, polar coordinates is that the unit vectors er and e theta uh, are always defined as function of the position of the particle or the object. Um, therefore, they will move in time. So, um, starting from the definition of the velocity vector as the time derivative of the position vector, we see that uh, we will have to take into account the time derivative of the unit vectors er and e theta themselves. We now need to express the time derivative of er, uh, which I noted as er with a dot on top of it. So let us consider a small time evolution of the vector er. Initially, um, it is represented by this vector, and after a small time, uh, it has turned slightly and is now represented by another vector. This new vector is the sum of the initial vector er plus a small displacement vector delta er. The new vector er uh, in green is also a unit vector, therefore it, the, the length of the vector uh, er didn't change. What changed is its orientation, and it has rotated by a small angle, delta theta. We now want to express um, delta er as function of delta theta. Remember that uh, the formula for an arc length, uh, if you have a radius r and the change of angle alpha, the arc length is r times alpha. However, if the angle alpha is very small, um, this is approximately the same uh, distance whether you follow the uh, arc length or whether you go straight from one point to the other. Therefore, delta e r corresponding to a small angle delta theta and the unit vector being 1, so the radius is 1, we can express delta e r as uh, equal to delta theta 
And for the direction of the vector, we see that it's uh, for small delta theta, it's perpendicular to ER, so it's parallel to E theta. Uh, therefore, delta ER is equal to delta theta times the vector E theta. Dividing both sides by delta t, we see that what we uh, have looks like uh, very much to uh, time derivative. And indeed, if we take delta t uh, very small, uh, then that definition um, of uh, time derivative. Therefore, the time derivative of er is equal to the time derivative of theta uh, times the vector e theta. So the velocity vector in polar coordinate can simply be expressed as r dot er plus r theta dot e theta. And from that we also get the kinetic energy by squaring the vector and multiplying by, by uh, half the mass. And as before, considering the fact that er and e theta are perpendicular and unit vectors, what we get is a kinetic energy half m times r dot squared plus r squared theta dot squared. So this may look a little bit um, uh, complicated and a long way to get to our result. However, once you have done it once, you don't need to do it again. Um, in assignment, in exam, uh, you can simply use the expression of the velocity in polar coordinate if needed. Uh, as well of, uh, as the, the expression for the kinetic energy in polar coordinates. You don't need to re-derive all that. You can just take these results as uh, granted. Um, in the exam, you will be allowed to have a cheat sheet in which you can write all these equations um, and then use them without having to re-derive them.